Hello. Hi there. I am in the kitchen and since I was cooking anyways, I thought I would flip on the old video and show you what I'm doing in case you would ever want to do something like this. Uh, I'm always trying to come up with new itchy nose. Uh, new healthy stuff and different ways to cook things. So this is my way of uh, um, coming up with something good and tasty and tastes indulgent, but yet still not not too bad. Anyhow, uh, let's get at it. All right, what are we gonna do? The hardest part is getting set up for it, all the products and the stuff and the chopping and the this and the that. So I've kind of already done some of this stuff. So I'm just gonna get at what I'm doing and then uh, we'll move along. Okay, thanks for hanging out. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna turn on my pan. Can you see my pan? Yeah, I'll move it down here. Get my big pan on the go. And I'm only using the big one because it's already ready to roll. So I'm going to fry up the onions. And what we're making today is a um, egg quinoa loaf so that it'll be made in the fridge for tomorrow. And it's Besh's birthday. So I like to make him things that he really loves, which I do all the time really. But because it's his birthday, I'm gonna do a, and it, this is leftover quinoa, which is pretty cool. And there's already a turnip in there from uh, Roots Country Farm, yes, from my CSA basket from the summer, well, and the fall. Anyhow, so local turnips, which is nice, so that's already in the quinoa, and uh, a lot of times what me and Besh do is we make a whole load of quinoa, and uh, in our miracle cooker, which I will show you that at some point in time. Anyhow, uh, it, we would just make a whole stash of it, and you can eat it like, uh, say the same way as oatmeal in the morning and you can heat it up in a pan with some milk and then add like nuts and bananas and stuff deadly okay but today we're gonna make it with eggs almost like a quiche I guess I even hate the word loaf loaf egg quinoa loaf Ugh. anyhow whatever right it tastes good so what I'm putting in my pan is some very delicious coconut oil. Mm -hmm. We use a lot of coconut oil in the run of the day and I would have more onions except I realized I am out of onions. What? Never heard the likes of it. Shocking. Actually, you know what? That pan is too big. Let me get out another one. Down in here. Actually, you know what? Maybe I could just do it in that little one. All right, let's do that. Change of plans, change of plans. All right, yeah, let's put coconut oil in this one. So I kind of pre-prepped everything and uh, I'm even using uh, dried mushrooms, which I have not before, but I got them at Costco. Let me show you. Here they are, I, they were dried and then I had to soak them in lukewarm water and then soak them in uh, hot water for 15 minutes. And after it's done, they say not to throw out the liquid underneath because you can make uh, like a sauce with it or something. So I'm gonna make some sort of a, I'm gonna make some sort of a mushroom sauce uh, to drizzle on the quinoa quiche. Quinoa quiche, oh, that's a better name. Oh, Kevin, I see you, Kevin Shaw. Anyhow, num num, mushrooms. All right, let's do it. Let's see what our pan is doing. It's my lovely cast iron. Oh, I love cast iron. We've got it in all kinds of sizes, especially since uh, we moved back to Newfoundland and our house had gas stove. It is the shit, man. It's really good. All right, let's throw our onions in. Like I said, I don't have many. I would put in more onions than this because onions rock. Put them in our wee little pan. There we go. I got a big bowl for mixing. So what I'm going to do is 
So like I said, this is my quinoa with turnip already in it. It's kind of leftover and it actually has a little bit of uh, red curry, red Thai curry paste in it. So it's like a little delicious. So I'm just gonna put all this in here. I don't know how many cups it is. Let me guess, uh, maybe three cups of quinoa. And you could fry up any vegetables you want and put in there, obviously. You can put tomatoes in, you can put bacon, you can put ham, you could put, uh, ooh, kale, which I'm gonna get because kale is so good for us. And I have some frozen. And it, I find it easier to chop up when it's frozen. Hi, cat. How's it going, honey? How is Nova Scotia today? This bag is really loud. There I go. And with kale, it always seems like a lot when you start, but then when you cook it up, not so much. All right, move my garlic to the side. Oh, fresh chopped garlic that I got also from Roots Country Farm. Da, 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 da. Oh yeah, spread out my little chummies. Uh, I also have a little spatula for my little pan. <laughs> yeah, kitchen pleasures, people, kitchen pleasures. Oh, I also have to turn on the overhead vent here. So it might be a bit noisier. Sorry. Deal with it. All right, get our onions frying. And then I'm just gonna throw on the garlic at the very last minute of that and just chill it out a bit, even though it'll cook more in the egg mixture. So I'm just gonna chop up the kale. Because there's nothing I detest more than a big chunk of kale in my mouth. I do not enjoy it. <laughs> it's too bad. But, so I chop it up rather finely and uh, just sort of immerse it into other recipes and ingredients. Like I'll always put it in a spaghetti sauce. I'll put it into like anything really. And wherever you can stick kale in is a good idea. Superfood, man, superfood. I just don't really enjoy the taste of it altogether. Unless it's like salted and lots of garlic. Okay, how are our onions? They're good. And a good way to get onions uh, nice and grilling is to add a little bit of, I usually add molasses and I mean only a little bit because you don't want your onions to taste like molasses unless you do want them to taste like molasses and then that's it Got our quinoa, no, our kale chopped, and it's gonna go in our bowl with our already existing quinoa and turnip. So I think we'll just toss that in there. Oh yeah, and they always say to use the back side of your knife to like clear off your board so that your blade doesn't get dulled by doing it with the blade side. Besh taught me that, the knife guy himself. All right, so the onions are almost done, so I'm just gonna throw in the garlic just to chill it out a little bit. All right, so what do I need now? Oh, eggs, right, we need something to stick, stick it all together. So the best thing is yesterday morning, who showed up on our doorstep but the lovely Bill Jameson and gave us fresh eggs from his happy chickens, hens. I guess. Happy hens. Yep. All right. Let's see. What do we have to do? Oh, yeah. So now that I have all this stuff in here, I actually would have mixed up the eggs first and then put all this into it because it'd be easier to mix. 
So I'm just going to get another bowl and mix it up in there. Now this is my pan. I don't know what this is, like a five by eight inch pan. I don't even know. Anyhow, so I got to figure out how many eggs with this much product is going to give me a pan full. Hmm. Hmm. Tricky. I guess I'll just mix until it looks like it. Oh, and I'm also going to put this because it's a little loaf. I'm going to put it in my toaster oven, not in my big kitchen oven. And, you know, you don't have to burn as much power to cook it. All right. I'm going to turn on my oven to, hmm, I think like 400 degrees. So we'll let it warm up while we get the rest of this stuff done. Oh yeah, the molasses makes the onions caramelize, which is divine. Alright, they're done. That is very hot. There we go. Look, mm, can you see that? Oh my stars. Anyhow. We will throw them in here, <laughs> and it'll help uh, thaw the kale, <laughs> right? All right, there we go. Ooh, yum, 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 yum. Delish. Okay. Now we can turn off our, oh, no, not our light, our fan. All right. We can ditch this. Okay, eggs. Let's do it. Well, I'll definitely start with, for the amount of stuff we have, and by stuff I mean our, this, this stuff, ooh, there's my light, ta-da, quinoa and kale and fried onions and garlic. Fresh cut. Two eggs. Martha Stewart says to crack your eggs individually in one bowl first and then put them in your main bowl so that if you have a bad egg, you can easily eliminate it. I'm going to listen to Martha right now. I've never done it before, but it actually is a good idea. And if I'm saying it like it's good advice, I should probably take it. Okay, let's see how good I am. I'll do this little bowl like a, like a professional chef. Get okay, ready? Oh look! The first one I did! I think because I panicked. I got like a big chunk of eggshell. <laughs> look, Martha. God love you, woman. Alright. Next one. Ooh, way better. Oh no, I got one shell in there. Look. Oh my god, she was so right. I should have done this 40 years ago. So that's four eggs. I think we'll do at least another one. Five eggs. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> All right. I think, yeah, I think five eggs. Hmm? This is how much we've got. Yeah. All right, what else? <laughs> Hold on. Okay, put my mm -hmm. uh, lost my uh... oh there's my towel all right I always keep my towel here on my side so that you can always wipe your hands and stuff oh and the other thing we have as well is mushrooms Ta -da. They were dried mushrooms, so I have undried them. Because Besh loves mushrooms, so. And there are a variety of gourmet mushrooms, which is divine. So I'll chop those up too. So I cut these up a little bit because they are huge. 
That'd be like eating a slug in your quiche. So I'm going to add those to the main pot again. And get some milk for our eggs. So I use uh, Hemp Bliss as my regular milk. Seems to be like good stuff in there. Alright, let's get this out of the way. Ta-da! Alright, so I just put in just a little bit, just makes it easier to whip up and uh, so in it as well, I'm going to put some dried garlic. If I had fresh garlic, I would use it, but I do not. So I use dried garlic. Not too much. Dried garlic is pretty toxic, so, uh, and I mean like powerful as in strong. So when you put it in something, you think, oh, it's just a few sprinkles, but it's actually like half a clove of garlic. No, half a bulb of garlic. And I'm also going to put hot chilies in here because I like it hot. Now these chilies are like deadly and deadly as in super hot. Ugh. Super hot. So I can only put in like a few, but with the mushrooms and the eggs absorbing the flavor, this should be okay. And of course, salt. Here we go. Salt. And pork. And what's up? This is not as complicated as it gets. I like uh, very simple meals. Now, meanwhile, I'll spend a whole day cooking for a crowd for a Saturday night. But in general, I try to keep it as as easy as possible. So we're just going to whip up, I think it was five eggs, and now we're going to add it to our mushrooms, quinoa, kale, fried onions, and fresh garlic. Okay, in it goes. There we go. Spatula, best thing ever in a kitchen. Well, I'm sure there's other things that tie it, but that's a good one. And now we'll just mix it around, see what kind of consistency we get. Like I said, I've never made this before, so I'm just winging it. <laughs> okay. Muck, muck, muck. There we go. It's kind of, I don't know, the consistency of... <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say it, but vomit. <laughs> but I'm sure it tastes way better. Oh, God. So sorry. Anyhow, that should do it. So I have my pan. It's already pre-greased with uh, uh, coconut oil. So let's just stick it in here. Oh, know your angles. Here we go. Slop, slop. It should taste good when it's done, though. Actually, you know what I would have put in was some Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. I never know how to say that. All right. Well, that was a good guess of amount. Here we go. Look at that. I think that's decent because it'll probably maybe rise. Maybe not. I don't even know. Okay. So when this is done, so I'm going to put this now in my toaster oven at 400 degrees. And I would say this will take, I'm not a, big baker of stuff, but I don't know. This should take about, oh, you know what I am going to do? I'm going to cover it up before I put it in there. Because that'll keep the heat in and then it'll cook faster. And then, so I'll stick it in the oven and maybe I'll put it in for 30 minutes and then I'll take the foil off, see what it looks like. Oh, shit.
shit! I didn't plug in my goddamn toaster oven. It's not even heated up. Oh. Shit. Live and learn, live and learn. All right. Anyhow, now it's heating up. All right, we'll just lay this to the side like Martha would. There we go. To the side it is. Um, and what I'm going to do with the, oh, here, with the lovely loaf after it's done, I have these honey butter croutons that I have left over from a party we threw for my mom's birthday, me and my two sisters. Uh, so these were left over, so I think I'm going to crush these up and then crumble it over once it's cooked a little more, because I think if I crush them up and put them in now, they're just going to like, they're just going to be soaked into nothing. So these will keep them crunchy on top after it's cooked for a little bit. Anyhow, so that'll be the egg quinoa birthday loaf for Besh tomorrow for his birthday. He will love it. And I actually think I'm, I am going to make some sort of a, a sauce out of the mushroom uh, water that I have from these dried mushrooms that I revitalized. Maybe some sort of a reduction or something and make it a bit creamy. Yeah, like a, yeah, something. Anyhow, so when this comes out, it'll be baked, and then I'll chop it up maybe in slices, and then we could reheat them in the big old cast iron pan. Num, num. And maybe a bit of cheese, a bit of sriracha. Oh, my God. All right, I hope you're having a good day. Thanks for hanging out. Bye.